All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores. And, of course, we had to break down everything that went down today and that Commanders versus the New York Jets joint practice that just went down in New Jersey, which is still crazy to call the New York Jets because both them and the Giants play and practice in New Jersey. But either way, Bryson Tremaine, the wide receiver, looks like he's going to make the team. We're going to talk about why. We have a lot of other very notable parts that went down today, man. A lot of bad, some good, but a lot of bad, man. We have a big time kicker problem, but linebacker Frankie Louvu was a menace out there today. The offensive line struggled, especially with some of the injuries we have there. Of course, I got to give you an injury update of who practiced and who didn't even get a chance to practice at all today. Manuel Forbes had a really big, hot and cold day. Very, very cold at times. And did Jaden Daniels pass his first real test? We're going to dive into all of that and more, of course. And you know we're going to go position group by position group. We're going to do a whole bunch of pre-practice stuff. Then we got to talk about what Dan Quinn said. And then we get to the quarterbacks, then the running backs, and the wide receivers, and the tight ends, all the way down through the D defense through the special teams we have big special teams updates today and then and then we finish it out round it out with a few random things as well but before we dive into all of that make sure you stiff arm that like button stiff arm the subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you stay tuned to all of the content i'm really really excited to get this out to y'all man I mean, it's it's so much going on. We have preseason coming up. I will be live streaming that game. The game starts at 12, but I'll start live streaming at 11 so we can talk about a lot of the things that went down in today's practice. Then while we're live streaming, we can talk about so many things, our expectations and predictions for the team, all kinds of things like that leading up to the Jets preseason game. Then, of course, I'm going to break down every little thing that happened in the preseason game as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this video instead of waste some more of y'all time let's get it adam adam first of all man their facilities are really nice man they have some really good looking facilities shouts out to ben standig for the pictures that you're seeing on your screen right now i rock with what they got going on like this is this looks very modern it looks really nice shouts out to the jets for this one i appreciate the fact that we even got to experience this today with the commanders going up to new jersey to practice with those guys and then we also have some clips from jp finley david harrison and nikki javala just to kind of give you a view in video form of what it looks like in the practice area before the the players and coaches even came out there as you can see on the screen right now and speaking of the facilities being really nice shouts out to my boy at Rush Manual on Twitter. Y'all remember him. I was shouting him out so much throughout the offseason. He brings up a great point. It should be noted that funding, development, and construction of the Florham Park training facility, the one that they practice at today, and their stadium, all of the Jets things that are going on, was spearheaded by former Jets EVP Thad Sheely, who now serves as an advisor to the commanders on stadium and real estate development. So if you love the facilities, if you love the way that they look, you love their get down, how they practice, even just the Jet Stadium, just know that the guy that was spearheading that process is now on board with the commanders trying to help us with that as well. So don't expect, not only just expect like a better stadium for the commanders to play in on sundays but also potentially upgrades to our practice facilities as well so i'm really excited about that now moving on john com before practice even started made sure that we knew that it was a 10 15 a.m practice the temperatures were going to be in the upper 60s which is i can't even imagine being anywhere near the upper 60s right now it's still really hot in atlanta right now i don't know what's going on up there but it's rainy it's super sunny down here i don't know and they have a good indoor facility but we never ended up needing it then dan quinn spoke 
to the media before practice and then Terry McLaurin and selected players spoke afterwards as I'm recording it now those guys are probably speaking after practice Terry McLaurin and whoever else they ended up picking so I don't know maybe we could do another video later tonight to update y'all on some of the most notable things that were said there because I'm assuming Robert Solid is probably going to speak to the media as well probably have some things to say about our team and maybe even more specifically Jaden Daniels so I may do another video on that we'll see also shouts out to JP Finley for pointing this out too the weather is pretty gross up here but where it is right now plan is for the commanders jets practice to stay outside which it ended up doing good test of actual football conditions considering both teams home stadiums are outdoors so there's no excuse it can just like it's raining today which led to a few drops by the receivers and some mistakes throughout the entire team we're going to get to that once we get to the position group by position group breakdown but there's no excuse because there are going to be some games you're going to have to play outside because you play for a team whose home games do not have a dome do not have a roof is not indoors but man it was ugly like by the time jp finley did that tweet it was 67 degrees and the forecast showed just high percentages of rain infinitely throughout the whole weather report man i don't know what's going on but i'm not gonna lie i'll take that upper 60s with rain over what i'm getting down here in atlanta and then also shouts out to mitch tister because he's always keeping track of this he even drove all the way up to new jersey to give us this information the first commander on the field for this joint practice was john bates you know it's been bryce and tremaine like 90 percent of the practices occasionally sometimes it may be Jaden daniels and sam hartman at the same time but when it came to the joint practices in new jersey John Bates was the first on the field and also at the end of the day the most important thing going into today was that we walk away with no further injuries because we already have injuries we already have injuries to starters at least projected starters right now which is not very good but the main thing today is to not add on to that already fairly extensive injury list speaking of injuries projected starting left tackle rookie Brandon Coleman did not participate in practice today he was out there but he didn't participate and then Andrew Wiley had pads on but Ben Standig pointed out the fact that that's no different than any other of these past few camp days where he skipped most of the drills and then later on down the line once we got through practice same thing pads on didn't participate Andrew Wiley keep saying for the past few days that the tightness situation that he's dealing with is no problem but we're seeing that he's not participating in practice even though he has pads on and it really sucks mainly for the Brandon Coleman situation because he needs as many reps as he can get especially against a really good arguably one of the best defensive lines in football with the that the New York Jets are throwing at him I and mean, I like some of the talent that we have in this edge rusher group on the commanders but it doesn't stand next to the to the Jets edge rusher group that they got going on right now in their pass rush so Brandon Coleman really missed out on some really meaningful snaps today and we're going to talk about it later when we get to the offensive line part of this video but the offense of line did struggle today and now we're left wondering if Brandon Como were out there would the offense have been way more efficient would the offensive line would have produced better would Jaden Daniels have been kept clean way better than he was so now it's just one of those situations where he missed a lot of reps it's hard to really evaluate the rest of the offense because your projected starting tackle and Brandon Coleman was not there so it's really hard to even know what to take away from this practice especially offensively because boy they were out there struggling man and then Samuel Cosme, the, and good news, even though Brandon Coleman and Wiley bad news, at least Samuel Cosme returned to practice. He's been dealing with illness, which is why he's missed a couple of practices. Now he's out there. Who knows if he was 100% or not, but at least he returned and actually participated in team drills and things like that. So at least you had your starting interior offensive lineman. Nick Allegretti on the left guard, Tyler Biotis center, Samuel Cosme 100% or not at right guard, but you were missing your two top tackles. Also, rookie defense defensive tackle Johnny Newton did not practice today either I heard he was just in regular chilling clothes no pads no nothing I think Brandon Coleman at least had like his jersey on and a helmet in his hand with shorts on but just no pads I think I remember hearing that Johnny Newton was just out there kicking it as if he was just a fan or something like that and then it also sounds like 
that even though we came in with a few injuries, great news is it doesn't seem like we gained any significant ones, any additional ones that beyond what we already have. So thank goodness for that. That's honestly the biggest priority coming into this practice. Please don't get hurt. Please nobody, especially nobody significant gets hurt. And even especially with the rain situation, it sounds like nobody got hurt. I, and that's, that's a good thing. I'm not even sure if I heard anything about anybody getting hurt on either side, which takes me to the point that Aaron Rodgers, because of that rain and the worry that he may get hurt or somebody else may get hurt, he did not participate in practice today because of the weather. And it wasn't his call. It was Robert Sala's decision. He literally pulled him and was like, you're not practicing today. I don't care what you say. And it sucks because just like with Brandon Coleman not out there, how do we truly evaluate the offense, Jaden Daniels specifically, when he doesn't have his projected starting left tackle out there protecting his blind spot? But same thing for the defense. How much can we truly take away from what happened today without Aaron Rodgers out there? Well, first of all, let me let you know. The Jets' backup quarterback is none other than Tyrod Taylor. Don't forget, he was going crazy against us just as recently as last year. So it's not like we just can assume that the commander's defense will not get challenged at all versus him. And when we get to the rest of this video, especially the defensive side, you'll see, yeah, Tyrod Taylor was definitely good enough to challenge our defensive backs. Now, again, he's not Aaron Rodgers, but he's also not a bum. But at the same time, it's still very deflating, especially going into the practice before practice even started, hearing about the fact that Aaron Rodgers would not be able to participate in this joint practice. I was, I mean, that deflated a little bit of my excitement. I was still very excited overall, but that did kind of take a little bit of air out of it. But it was still a very informative practice, both good and a lot of bad, even though... Aaron Rodgers nor Brandon Coleman on our end, Aaron Rodgers on their end, were out there. Still very, I mean, you could argue the most informative practice we've had this year just based on the fact that it really brought us back down to earth in some ways. We're going to get to that. Now, let's talk about what a lot of the coaches said. We have some very big time quotes from Dan Quinn, and we even have a pretty cool quote from Robert Sala as well. But starting with Dan Quinn, the main quote that I took away from today, because he, I mean, of course, we're going to talk about what his plans were for practice because he speaks before the practice even happens. And I feel like a lot of those quotes are still important to bring up and bring to y'all attention because there, there's still some important context there. But by far, the most important quote that he said today was the fact that Joe Wood Jr. will call plays from the coach's box during the season, but Cliff Kingsbury will be on the sideline. And I'm completely with Scott Abraham when he brings up the fact that he likes the fact that Cliff Kingsbury will be down on the field. That face-to-face -face communication with Jaden Daniels will be pretty important. I think that will be pretty pivotal. We can have other guys maybe up top on the radio or whatever they use the headset talking down to Cliff Kingsbury and letting them know what they're seeing but i like the fact that cliff kingsbury will be down there with Jaden daniels face to face so they can go over stuff on the tablets and things like that but i like the fact that joey jr is going to be up in the box because as a defensive coordinator you really got to see what the offense is trying to do to you what the tendencies look like and things like that and it gives you a good bird's eye view of what's really happening and then dan quinn let's just get to the other quotables that he had first of all he talked about the fact that he grew up in the area and said this was where his love for football began and he's excited to be back he even mentioned the fact that like some of his family members and close friends were probably at the practice and stuff like that that's pretty cool and then he also said that he wanted to re-emphasize the need for a healthy culture as the team looks to continue building a positive product on the field and that's why he's really excited about the fact that not only are we having a joint practice but we're having them with good teams like the Jets and the Dolphins who are definitely playoff contenders arguably Super Bowl contenders we'll see to the extent of that and then he also talked about practice fights he said quote our objective objective here is to come get the work he wants to practice but not looking for anything past that he wants them to practice hard but don't take it too far Dan Quinn also said that the practice plan has not changed even due to the weather as they don't think it will be a big factor unless it gets worse and apparently it didn't get worse enough for them to actually make any changes they went on with practice like normal other than the fact that Aaron Rodgers wasn't out there because of the rain but on the commander side we pretty much went about it as if it was a perfectly sunny day Dan Quinn also said that the weather isn't a big fluence on the practice plans because the fields are draining well so the Jets practice facilities and fields are up to par to the point that even though it's raining it's draining the water isn't stacking and causing any puddles or anything like that Dan Quinn also said that he wanted to see speed on both sides of the ball and communication on the field from his 
players. And then lastly, as far as Dan Quinn quotes go, Dan Quinn said that he doesn't want young guys thinking about Saturday's preseason game. Just focus on practice today. And that is it. And then before we move on to what actually happened in practice, Robert Sala before practice talked about Dan Quinn and Adam Peters. And he said, quote, I know they're excited about the quarterback too. So really excited for Dan Quinn and Adam Peters, their general manager. They're going to get that franchise turned around, unquote. I appreciate the glowing remarks. You know, Adam Peters and Robert Sala go back to the days at, with the 49ers together, back when Robert Sala was their defensive coordinator. So shouts out to the love from him, man. Seems like it was a pretty decent practice. I felt like he ran, ran it well on the Jet side. Dan Quinn ran it well on our side. And, you know, there wasn't too much chaos and drama. I feel like they controlled the environment. Now, moving on, and before we get to the quarterbacks, let's just talk about overall. So Linnell pointed out the fact that the Commanders and Jets will have a 7-on-7 seven -seven period with all man coverage, and that's a big opportunity for the corners to practice and get better and show what they could do. That's how they started off practice. Then they were going to have a big-time special teams period, and then they moved on to team period where it was 11-on-11s 11 where the offensive line and the defensive line came onto the field. But at first, it was 7-on-7s seven with the quarterbacks and wide receivers and I guess the running backs and tight ends versus their linebackers and DBs. And then while all of that was going on, you had like basically the, the offensive line and the defensive line 1v1 in on the side at that time but again later on they eventually all came together and it was full blown 11 on 11s starters versus starters backups versus backups and things like that and shouts out to my boy jamal atlet martella because he brings up a great point setting it up to go against all man coverage is big for both sides of the ball for washington offensively this wide receiver unit going up against the defense who has top who was top 10 in man usage and washington wide receivers going up against their top three cornerbacks is something to watch for defensively you get a mix of an elite shifty fast wide receiver plus three six foot three 215 pound physical receivers with a rod as their quarterback now granted a rod didn't get a chance to go out there but still that is a very diverse group of wide receivers they're kind of the opposite of ours i think that's also an additional benefit to this joint practice that maybe a lot of people aren't noticing because again and our wide receiver room is filled with a bunch of small shifty get open type of guys but the jets are more so filled up with big six foot three physical guys like my boy let Maltell it pointed out so that was that was a little different for them even though garrett wilson is plenty of shifty get open as we're going to get to later on in this video when we get to the defensive back part of the video and then shouts out to ben standig because he said the scene rain 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 the near field to our view is washington's offense going against the jets and sevens man coverage corner quarterbacks going one play each and then you had terry versus sauce gardner at the time and then when you flipped on the other field tyrod taylor was qb1 for the jets so basically at a certain point in practice to start off you had seven on sevens with commander's offense versus jets defense practicing while our defense was going against their offense with tyrod taylor at quarterback practicing all at the same time simultaneously and again offensive lines and defensive lines were 1v1 in at that time and just to let y'all know just to warn y'all they did not allow reporters to record parts of practice especially the ones that we wanted to see the most so just a heads up i was able to get some clips because apparently some jets fans that were there somehow were able to record some things and upload it but i'm not sure if these were supposed to be sent out to the internet but i will give you those clips when we get there especially the emmanuel forbes versus garrett wilson matchup i mean we have a few clips of that but we'll get there we have some Jaden daniels throws as well and then jp finley also said that he was seeing a lot of flags thrown by the refs when our offense was out there going against the Jets defense and he said that some of them seem procedural but a lot of them seem like holes so just remember that when we're talking about the offensive line part of this video and some people saying that we had a little bit of a fight some people are saying that it was more like of like ex extracurricular if anything but something happened basically between the commander's defense and the Jets offense and I'm hearing that Emmanuel Forbes was in the middle of it versus Brees hall it was a quick skirmish as nikki javala described it and basically she said it was weak and a jets reporter said that it was basically just a shoving match and that's it but just to let you know we didn't have like a full-blown fight but there were a little bit of tempers flaring at a certain point in practice i heard that our offensive line and their defensive line started to get a little chippy and things like that but nothing beyond that so it was relatively tamed now let's move on to the quarterback position now of course i'm only here to talk about Jaden daniels so that's where we're gonna keep it i mean marcus Mariota, just to get 
it out the way had an up and down day from what i heard like he looks pretty bad at one point but then he also made a couple of nice throws just sound like a typical marcus mario today but dan quinn talking to the media before practice said that the main thing that he wants to see from Jaden daniels is that he wants to see him continue to do what he's already shown so far and that's decision making and like i've said in several videos that's probably arguably the most important trait that a quarterback can have and so that's going to be big time as far as Jaden daniels development and how ready he'll be to actually be able to win games for us week one of the regular season now let's move on to what happened in practice starting off in seven on sevens the very first play Jaden daniels found zach ertz over the middle for a nice game here's the clip right here Then after that, De'Ami Brown had a really nice one-handed catch on a deep ball from Jaden Daniels, and the deep ball was extremely accurate from Jaden Daniels. Great catch from De'Ami, but the throw from Jaden Daniels was elite, but Linnell also pointed out the fact that De'Ami Brown is having a great camp overall. If you wanted to see that play, here's it, the clip right here. I believe it was uploaded by the commanders on a different social media site other than Twitter. And then the Jets, at a certain point, they were live streaming the practice, but at a certain point early in practice, like, after, like immediately after Jaden Daniels is cooking them in seven on sevens, they took their stream down. And you can't tell me it wasn't because Jaden Daniels was cooking them. Because Jaden Daniels was dotting them up in them seven on sevens. I believe Jaden even had two straight completions, I believe, in a row before that stream shut off. And then even while they were streaming it, they weren't necessarily showing our good plays. They only showed a couple of the good ones that, that the Jets offense was making. They just barely showed the Jets defense. Jaden Daniels was carving them up during them seven on sevens. And shout out out to my boys at let Maltella and my boy mark bullock over there because i like their back and forth and i agree because jamal first tweeted the jets gave youtube a 25 minute practice stream and said lmao and all of that type of stuff mark bullock said he saw some warm-ups one throw from Jaden, a few one-on-one -on -one reps from the backup offensive line and then that was basically it and then jamal said they made sure to show garrett winning over the top one time too though they made sure they squeezed that in there before they ended that stream quickly and then mark bullock brought up a great point still more than we've seen from any washington training camp so i can't even be mad at the jets even though they ended the stream early that early stream is still more than what we've gotten from any commanders practices which again as a fan as a selfish fan i would love to see a lot of our practices live streamed or whatever but i understand why they don't strategy they don't want a whole bunch of people knowing what they're trying to do and i care way more about them winning on sundays than them showing me what they do in practice in august so I, I, it would be nice. The Jets are still finding a way to do it, but it is what it is. But then after those seven on sevens, basically as soon as they turn that stream off, the offense started to struggle for the most part. They switched to 11 on 11s and the commanders at a certain point, like one drive, didn't get a single yard against the Jets defense in the first go round. And it was because the offensive line just couldn't get any push in the run game. We tried to run the ball stonewalled. And then the second team offense went out there at a certain point. And then later on, the starting team, the, the starting offense went back out there with Jaden Daniels and those guys. And they looked better, not great, but at least better. But J.P. Finley saw a play where one play after Trent Scott gave up a quick sack against Jaden Daniels, the very next play, Jaden Daniels adjusted and got the ball out quicker to Brian Robinson again the very next play. So he's showing that he can adapt in that way. But then shortly after that, Seawall Sports tweeted 11 versus 11s for the offense. Not good. Just that. Just simply that. Nothing else in that tweet. Then Linnell tweeted, Jaden Daniels went 4 of 7 for 15 yards in the fumble in one of the early 11 on 11 sessions he looked out of sync to this point hard to judge because of interior pressure and pressure off the edge he's getting beat up by the Jets D line basically and he's been late and holding on to the ball too long and that's something I've never really heard anybody say about him so far this offseason so that's interesting good test for him don't panic it's his first time versus a new defense and I completely agree there then Colin Dunphy brought up a great point a funny point he said Jaden Daniels virtual reality game right now is on expert mode going against this Jets defense heavy rain guards playing tackle we're going to talk about that when we get to the defensive line part of this because again we have so many injuries to tackle that we had guards interior linemen that are better at center 
having to step in and tackle for us. That's why Jaden Daniels was under duress all day today. So you had heavy rain, guards playing tackle, and the great Jets defense that's arguably one of the best in the NFL. So we really just need to put this into perspective that we should not have expected Jaden Daniels to come out here and be lights out like he's been because otherwise he would be in the MVP conversation already. And we're not even just talking about rookie of the year type of stuff. We're talking about best quarterback in the NFL, Pat Mahomes level stuff. If he would have came out here and balled out against this defense already. But Zach Selby pointed out the fact that after another 11 on 11 periods was up, Daniels hit back to back passes to Zach Ertz. And then Linnell pointed out the fact that he had a nice ball to Terry McLaurin on an out as well. And he he, had, he was three of three at a certain point in that period. And he pointed out the fact that Jaden Daniels was getting the ball out of his hands much sooner on this time. And on time and all that type of stuff, he was way more on schedule. Then Zach Selby tweeted that Daniels was three of four on that series. Probably the best the offense looked all day. And now I would say they definitely, that that's probably the best you got out of them. And then the commander's first team offense went out for the final drive of the day and you know i try to keep this in chronological order for a reason and then Jaden daniels started zero of two there and at a certain point i mean because one of them mostly punched the ball out from zach Ertz. so Jaden daniels got it to him but cj mosley did a good job of getting that out of his hand and then Jaden daniels was inaccurate throwing one towards terry mclaurin where it sailed over terry mclaurin's head but then Jaden daniels hit zach Ertz while he was basically triple contested for a great catch by zach Ertz and triple coverage but but sadly, Chris Paul was technically offsides on the play, so it didn't it didn't technically count. It was called back. But still, that's very impressive because apparently it was fourth and 10 on the play. So you had those two incompletions from Jada Daniels. I don't know what happened on third down, but then fourth and 10 after nothing has moved so far in that that specific drive set up but in the practice. Jaden Daniels had a clutch moment to Zach Ertz, who was super clutch there. Fourth and 10, they were able to convert the first down again, ignoring the fact that Chris Paul was offsides. And then Eric Sully at Commander's Realm brings up a great point. He said, regardless of how good or bad this team is, believe that Zach Ertz is going to have a gazillion catches this year. Again, Serge the Shooter was saying it last week that you may want to go ahead and snag Zach Ertz in, 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 in fantasy because he's going to get a lot of targets. Not exactly sure how many yards or touchdowns he'll get, but he's gonna get targets ppr leagues zach Ertz is that guy and it's only helping with Jaden daniels i mean think about it from Jaden daniels's point of view this has been his biggest struggle of a day that he's had probably in years as a quarterback and he fourth and ten just throw it up to zach Ertz, and he comes down triple covered to still make the catch you know how much trust Jaden daniels gained from him even beyond how much how he already trusted him going into this practice and i was seeing multiple reports from different sources and different people that have been going to the practices that zach Ertz is already Jaden daniels go-to target and probably his most consistent and dependable target is safety blanket that's why we signed zach Ertz to come here that's literally what he's here to be for Jaden daniels but then even beyond Beyond that today, when Jaden Daniels is probably having the worst quarterbacking day he's had in years, for him to go out there and just throw it up there, just throw a prayer to Zach Ertz on 4th and 10, and he come down with it. You know how much trust Jaden Daniels has for Zach Ertz after that? Come on, man. So let's keep it pushing. And then Jaden Daniels finished the day 7-15 of 15 overall, according to Linnell Willingham. And he said that they were basically all checks, downs, and screens for the most part. He said 25 yards at max, even though he did... I mean, I guess you have to take away that Zach Ertz completion, the triple cover one, because it came back. And then I, I believe he's also ignoring the seven on seven stuff when Jaden Daniels was killing it. But just 11 on 11s, it wasn't that great. And I mean, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes the only things that are open are check downs. I'm hearing that that the, 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 the Jets DBs did a pretty good job against guys like Terry McLaurin. Sauce Gardner looked really good out there. So it wasn't even necessarily Jaden Daniels' fault. I want you to keep that in mind that... I mean, the wide receivers, from what I'm hearing, were getting strapped up. Jada Daniels, instead of taking a bunch of sacks, let's just try to dump this off to the, the running backs underneath and things like that. Again, like earlier, we spoke on where there was one play where Trent Scott allowed a sack to happen. Jaden Daniels super quickly. The very next play, Jada Daniels was like, all right, let me get the ball to Brian Robinson underneath very quickly so that we can avoid that since we realized that Trent Scott is not going to block today. And so, you know, it's just only but so much you can do. And on top of that, so 
some of those complete incompletions that he had were drops by the receivers. Still not a great day overall by Jaden Daniels. I'm not making a bunch of excuse, uh, excuses for him, but he did show flashes of why you took him second overall. He wasn't the personification of excellence like he's been so far pretty much this entire training camp. But for that final period of 11 on 11s with the starters, a Jets reporter did say Jaden Daniels just like it was like a two minute drill portion of the Washington offense versus the Jets defense. Two minute drill just to remind you. Jaden Daniels completion, then incompletion to the sideline, DJ Reed in coverage, then Sauce Gardner locked down Terry McLaurin who dropped the pass incomplete. Then Zach Ertz won a 50 50 ball down the field for what looked like a nice catch, but it was called back. That was the triple covered one, likely offensive pass interference too. So dang, I mean, he just that that Jets reporter not playing. He's saying Zach Ertz cheated to get that catch, but it was because of the Chris Paul thing that's why it came back and then Sauce Gardner had a leaping pass breakup he said drive over and Washington went nowhere literally gained technically no yards on that on that drive because the, again the Zach Ertz triple cover fourth and 10 first down catch was called back due to Chris Paul offsides so I'm not gonna lie as you notice in there you heard Terry McLaurin getting strapped up by Sauce Gardner as well so yeah we can blame Jaden Daniels for some of it we can blame the offensive line for most of it arguably probably the majority of it for sure but terry mclaurin i'm looking at you too also before we move on from the quarterback part of this video before we got to those 11 on 11s in between the 7 on 7s and 11 on 11s when we had that special teams period aaron Rodgers in his street clothes was talking to Jaden daniels at midfield i'm hoping that Jaden daniels was able to soak up as much knowledge as possible from him don't don't none of the off the field stuff please aaron Rodgers, with the shenanigans you have going on there but just i hope y'all really talked football over there i really hope y'all and then y'all are both from cali y'all are both cali guys i, I believe um aaron Rodgers may be a southern cali guy as well but i know for a fact he's from california so they can bond over that i'm hoping that they did and then running back wise i mean i didn't hear anything from anybody the only thing i heard about any of our running backs was austin eckler being a part of kick returns today we'll, we'll talk about that later but other than that nothing from the running backs and how could you have anything to surmise from what the running backs did today them poor guys you couldn't even evaluate them today because the offensive line was just getting just completely pushed back stonewalled and things like that they couldn't open up any run lanes for the running backs it was nothing they could really do and i mean cosme coming back from illness probably didn't help because again like i said earlier he may not have even been 100 percent out there today he just maybe was good enough to be like all right let me get out there and do this joint practice because i know this is a very important practice for us but i don't think he was very and then of course our our starting tackles were all out it just wasn't a good day it's really hard to take away some real definitive judgments from what happened now moving on to the receiver group Linnell pointed out the fact that at 10 42 a.m when they were still really early in the practice i believe this may have been seven on the sevens that we have already seen a few balls hit the ground in routes versus air so no actually this is during like the drills before we even start going against the jets which is it's just receivers running routes with no dbs covering them and they were dropping passes wide receiver room under the microscope how do they ha handle the elements it sounds like they got a little bit better with it overall throughout the day but they started off sluggish with with the rain affecting them and not allowing them to catch passes like they normally would but again no excuses because we do not play in a dome so you will have to play in rain more than likely at some point this season probably even in more than one game but then Linnell talked about how Bryson Tremaine had a nice toe tap along the sideline for about 20 yards and he also emphasized the fact that he's been balling out all camp and this is one of the guys that I've been screaming about since last year that I'm rooting for him to make the team and it's nice to hear that he's been balling out and then even beyond that he had he ended up with two deep passes almost back to back and the last one he had to twist his body to make the catch according to John Com. it was a nice grab and everybody keeps talking about how he's showing up then Ben Standig tweeted guarantees in life death taxes and Bryson Tremaine catching every deep pass thrown his way in camp practices and he already had two and we were only like 30 minutes into practice today and that may have been all the ones he had today I don't know at least those are the only ones that people tweeted about but he had two big deep deep down the field catches I believe all of them were probably from Marcus Mariota but either way Bryson Tremaine has been balling and then after that later in practice Bryson Tremaine was out there with the first team offense with, with Olamide Zacchaeus, I'm trying to work on pronouncing his name right, correctly, because I've been saying um, Olamide, but it's Olamide. 
I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm trying to remember that. So he, um, Zacchaeus and Bryson Tremaine were out there with the starters at a certain point in practice. So that just goes to show that Bryson Tremaine is really starting to earn some eyes and some some oohs from the coaches to where they're like, all right, let's start to throw him out there with the first team and see how he hangs with those guys against the Jets. Really good defense. And again. He, he was technically out there with the second stringers for the most part when he was making his plays, but the fact that he got some looks out there with the starters is very significant. Then De'Ami Brown had a big-time one-handed grab on a pass from Jaden Daniels working against DJ Reed. That's the throw I showed y'all the clip of earlier with that one-handed catch that was like a perfect ball from Jaden Daniels. Again, just overall, Jaden Daniels, not a great day, but again, he showed you those flashes, especially in that throw right there, but De'Ami Brown, he had that one great one-handed catch at one point in time, but then he also had a drop on a really good ball from Jaden Daniels as well. It was a little bit inside, but he still should have caught it. We need bet we need consistency from you, Deami Brown. We need the consistency. We've been seeing flashes, and granted, you've been more consistent this training camp than any other season you've been with the commanders, but we still need that consistency to ramp up a little bit more. And then Linnell pointed out the fact that Ben Sennett and Luke McCaffrey had a couple of nice catches today as well, which takes me to the tight end group because Luke McCaffrey is, of course, a wide receiver that's good to hear. But then moving on to the tight ends again Ben Sennett had some good catches today he stood out because of that but then Linnell pointed out the fact that again earlier seven on sevens Jaden Daniels the very first play of seven on sevens against the Jets to start the practice basically Zach Ertz was out there making catches against those guys and then Linnell pointed out the fact that at a certain point and later on in practice Cole Turner had a drop on the ball that was behind them from Marcus Mariota and Marcus Mariota you got to do a better job of getting that to him and in an accurate way to make it easier for them to catch but at the end of the day just like the army browns drop that we just talked about you still got to catch them if they if they touch your hands you got to catch them i mean we saw that one clip um, a few practices ago with Jaden Daniels threw it behind Ben Sennett and he had to literally turn his body around and catch it with one hand at the last second he was still able to do it so Cole Turner I'm expecting better it wasn't a great throw but it's a throw you should catch and I'm I'm sitting here like so y'all cut my boy Armani Rogers for this but nah for real though I'm just joking but for real I mean you better get it together because I, somehow Cole Turner beat out my boy Armani Rogers to stay on the team, but Kosey Yankov is not as far away from Cole Turner on this depth chart as many people may believe. He's probably right on his neck. So Cole Turner, you want to make this team? You better go out there and make catches, no matter how ugly the throws are, because that's really your only trait. You're not a guy that can get open on his own. You're not a great blocker yet. Your one thing is contested catches and catching anything that's within your bubble, anything within your gravitational pool. And so you are not, if anything, allowed to drop any passes. And then lastly, again, just to remind you that Zach Ertz had that triple covered catch. I mean, I just got to bring that up again since we're still talking about the tight ends. Now the offensive line part of this, and again, with Brandon Coleman and Andrew Wiley out, your projected starting left and right tackles. At a certain point today, you had Trent Scott at right tackle and Cornelius Lucas starting a left tackle for you. And that was just the beginning. We had a lot more all kinds of combinations than that moving on we'll get to that shouts out to george carmy for pointing out the fact that jp finley said that trent scott had a really poor showing and 11 on 11 drills at right tackle so even beyond just that one sack that he allowed that we talked about with Jaden daniels the very next play was like i'm just gonna get the ball out of my hands sooner since y'all don't want to block today but apparently a lot of the day Trent Scott did not look good I, I believe even in the one-on-ones periods where it was D lineman of the Jets versus our offensive line one-on-ones Trent Scott was getting beat bad with some spin moves and things like that not a good day for him at all and George Carmen brings up a good point granted he is a depth tackle but that's still something to note because just like we're dealing with injuries now if we have to deal with injuries in the regular season and we have to depend on Trent Scott to go out there it's almost to a point that I don't I, Cornelius Lucas and Trent Scott scare me so much we may need to go out Jaden Daniels may have to sit if Brandon Coleman and Andrew Wiley are out Jaden Daniels may have to sit I'm joking but I'm scared for him man I really do not like Trent Scott and Cornelius Lucas and then Linnell pointed out the fact that the first team offensive line struggled to get any push in the run game and were held I mean they had three yard runs that were held for a total of one yard or less at a certain point in practice like we talked about earlier and then at a certain point Chris Paul 
known entirely purely as a guard had to step in and play right tackle for us and then Trent Scott moved to left so Cornelius Lucas was out Trent Scott went from right tackle to left tackle Chris Paul stepped in at right tackle then Mason Brooks came in to, to play some left tackle for us which is insane because I see him if anything as a center maybe a guard he had to play left tackle today and so it's just crazy. All for that, Mason Kennehan even said, yeah, bro, this offensive line is cooked, at least today. I get we're rotating people, but with all of the injuries right now, it does not look good. And then Linnell Willingham, Willingham pointed out the fact that later on in practice, Chris Paul was at right tackle, and then Trent Scott was at left tackle. So, I mean, they were just mixing it up like crazy. It was just all kind of shifting around. I am scared. We need to get our offensive line healthy as soon as possible because that does not sound good at whatsoever right now. And also, before we move on to the defensive line part, just to remind you, J.P. Finley did point out the fact that once the rain really started to come down and it started to rain a little harder, the Jets' offense and the Skins' defense did start to get chippy. Now, moving on to the defensive line part, Linnell pointed out the fact that with no Rodgers practicing, focus, in my opinion, shifts to the commander's pass rush versus the Jets' offensive line. I completely agree because, I mean, with Tyrod Taylor out there, even though he, he's not a bum he's still not Aaron Rodgers so we're still looking at the DBs to see what you can do but once I heard Aaron Rodgers was out I'm right with Linnell I'm like all right so what does this pass rush look like because that's not necessarily dictated by the quarterback that's out there compared to like how the, the, the how much the receivers produce is a debt is directly affected by the quarterback play whereas the offensive line somewhat affected but at the same time a lot of it is going to be we can isolate this and be like well if Aaron Rodgers were out there or Tyrod Taylor doesn't matter it could have been any of us out there we can you know take away some observations from what our pass rush did against the Jets offensive line and blocking and he said that if this defense is going to turn it around that unit must ball out I completely agree then he also pointed out the fact later on that Frankie Louvu had a really good rush at a certain point. Armstrong also had a good rush. So you have Dorrance Armstrong as the edge rusher. Frankie Louvu as the off-ball linebackers. They did a pretty good job on a few reps there. Then he later pointed out that Armstrong got some really good pressure later on. And it would have been a sack. And he said that he's really been flashing in this practice today against the Jets. And then Nikki Javala tweeted after that, the commander's defense is coming alive now. So they started a little slow, but then they started to hunker down and that D-line started to put the work on that Jets O-line. Then a Jets reporter himself said that the Washington defensive line was dominating the Jets O-line in a, in a move the ball period at a certain point in practice. But he did point out the fact that both Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses were subbed out before the defense of line started dominating so how much can we really take from that i'm not exactly sure their starting tackles got left the field and stopped practicing by the time our defensive line started to dominate and really get pressure but then linnell in great news seventh round rookie javante john baptiste the edge rusher he said that he flashed on the edge today and he said that he's done so so far in camp as well this is not just a one day thing you noticed on the depth chart he was second like right behind Doris Armstrong, I believe, on there. It was like Cleveland Farrell and, 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 and Doris Armstrong as the starters. You had Javante John Baptiste, the seventh round pick by Adam Peters and Dan Quinn in his most recent draft, right behind him. He also pointed out the fact that John, Javante has really long arms and has definitely helped him with his pass rush skill set. Now, moving on to the linebackers again, like I said before the intro, Frankie Louva was a menace today. At a certain point, he got around when Tyron Smith was out there, he got around him on a blitz and forced Tyrod Taylor to throw the ball away because of how much of a heat-seeking missile he was. And he just complete... Tyron Smith is a Pro Bowl tackle when healthy. He was healthy enough today to be out there and Frankie Louvu still beat him to get to the quarterback. I'm telling y'all, when people are talking about him being a top three linebacker in the NFL, it may not be hyperbole. And then there was a point in time where Linnell tweeted, Louvu and Jordan McGee just leveled the starting tailback for the Jets. So shouts out to Jordan McGee getting some love as well, getting active but Frankie Louva was getting after the quarterbacks and the running backs from what I'm hearing and then even after that Linnell also tweeted Louvu has done a nice job getting pressure today so it was a more than one time thing he was beating up on those tackles whether it was the starters or the backups so that's great news to hear then cornerback wise ooh wee and this one's going to be mostly centered around Emmanuel 
Forbes. Well, first of all, JP Finley tweeted at 10.47 a.m. that Tyrod Taylor has the Jets offense cooking, and they hit a few deep shots in 7-on-7s. Seven seven. Not a good start. And then just right before that, a minute before that, Linnell pointed out the fact that Tyrod Taylor had a really good gain for a big amount of yards against Benjamin St. Juice. And there, from here on out, the rest of this cornerback group, we are focused on Emmanuel Forbes, sadly. So, even though Garrett Wilson got the best of Emmanuel Forbes today, Emmanuel Forbes did have what I believe to be the only interception of the day, at the very least, the first interception of the day. Also, he's covering Garrett Wilson in... I also want to point out the fact that if Emmanuel Forbes is covering Garrett Wilson, that doesn't sound like a backup corner on the depth chart to me. I mean, that's their best receiver. And like the, like I've been saying for the past couple of videos, I don't know why they put him as a backup on the depth chart because he hasn't looked like a backup in practices. Not even just talking about talent and production wise, but he's literally been out there with the starters arguably more than any other corner on this team. So I just thought that was weird. And again, the fact that he's covering Garrett Wilson tells you that he is one of the starting corners. I, I still don't get why they didn't have him as one in that first depth chart but it is what it is and then also the only altercation today that we had between the two teams involved man emmanuel forbes with him being in the middle of it with Brees hall which i'm really not surprised about because he is a big trash talker and that's one of the main reasons i really want him to be good i love my trash talking football players really athletes period but if you heard about emmanuel forbes getting cooked today here are some of those clips showing you those. And again, these are coming from Jets fans and directly from them. They're rooting for Emmanuel Forbes to get cooked. So, of course, they're going to upload these clips. I'm just going to go ahead and play those in a row right now. Well, before we dive into more clips, just to stop after this clip real right quick, just the, this very first one. Shouts out to Nick Ackridge of Pro Football Focus because I completely agree. He said, not great from Emmanuel Forbes at all but what's the safety doing is this cover one and he's cheating down or is it just happen to be cover zero and he's supposed to be on the running back and he said let me get the all 22 practice film commanders because I I, I think that is an honestly good point that we need to that, that like where is the safety help for Emmanuel Forbes there why is he on a complete island with Garrett Wilson where is the rest of the DB group right there and then now for the last few clips of Garrett Wilson and I believe there's even other receivers here but I know for a fact most of it, if not all of it, is Garrett Wilson versus Emmanuel Forbes. Here you go. And then even after all of that cooking that we just saw in those clips on Emmanuel Forbes, Linnell even tweeted after those clips came out, something that I just saw that is completely unacceptable, and I don't believe anybody has footage of this, but he said Emmanuel Forbes got beat in coverage, and, and instead of trying to recover, he just put his head down and jogged as the receiver caught the ball deep down the field, just completely gave up on the rep, and that's probably the most alarming thing that I heard from Emmanuel Forbes all day. Him getting beat in those other clips or whatever, at least you're competing, but for you to give up at any point in time in a rep is, is very, very concerning. We need way better, uh, especially if I'm going to root for you to succeed, Emmanuel Forbes. I can't have that, man, because you're making me look crazy. And then Mitch Tisla also pointed out the fact that other than the one big play from Emmanuel Forbes, where he had that interception, Garrett Wilson, to put it nicely, has gotten the best of number 13. Then you have Connor Hughes, who I believe is a Jets reporter. He said Emmanuel Forbes, whom Garrett Wilson has already beat for two touchdowns at this point in practice. Also a sliding first down grab and a now a long gain for another first down where he juked him to pick up an extra 10 and that's in one of the clips that you just saw earlier was just throwing hands at a couple of Jets players talking about Emmanuel Forbes and he said that the Jets didn't take the bait and Wilson is having his best practice of the summer right now so let's point out multiple things here first of all so Garrett Wilson was not only beating Emmanuel Forbes but it was in a variety of different ways and then the Jets reporter is saying that Emmanuel Forbes after getting beat several times, tried to get into the head of the Jets by starting those scuffles that we were hearing about that we were just talking about earlier. So apparently, Manuel Forbes was the catalyst for a lot of those scuffles, between, especially the one between him and Breach Hall. And apparently, the guys didn't fall for it. They didn't allow him to get into his head. They didn't take the bait, as the Jets reporter said. And then I also want to point out the fact that the Jets reporter feels like 
Garrett Wilson had the best practice of the entire summer so far against Emmanuel Forbes, better than he's had against any DB against the Jets, his own Jets DBs, his own teammates. And shouts out to Jamal Adlet Maltellet again because he brings up a great point. Getting beat is one thing, but then throwing hands, if he was really throwing them, after all of that had occurred is another. Take your A word back to the huddle. I completely agree. What are you doing, Emmanuel Forbes? This is one thing to get beat like a drum, but the moment earlier that we just talked about where Linnell pointed out how you gave up on a rep, and then also later on, while you're getting beat, instead of just playing better and covering well, you decide to try to get into their heads and start fights. I don't necessarily like that at all either, man. Very bad day for Emmanuel Forbes overall. And at this point, while I'm reading this information and I'm seeing this, I'm hearing JP Finley talk live on the on the, the Team 980 or whatever app it is. I was starting to think, man, it may be time to call Stephon Gilmore at corner, man. And while you're at it, maybe bring in David Bakhtiari at tackle. I don't know. Hopefully, Brandon Coleman and Andrew Wiley are healthier than it seems right now, though. We'll see. But then... Emmanuel Forbes actually bounced back once he got his head into the game and and stopped playing around he had two really good back-to-back -back reps um according to Linnell Willingham and he sat on a Garrett Wilson route at one point in time but apparently he ended the practice well overall it was still a bad day for him just all around but at least he ended the practice fairly well with at least some positives to take away there and then serves the shooter brought up a good point so it sounds like Forbes had a normal day as a corner got cooked also made a few plays Garrett Wilson is that dude though he needs that work and matchup so Serge the shooter's probably basically giving like an optimistic view of like I mean Garrett Wilson cooks a lot of corners and the fact that Emmanuel Forbes like basically fought back and even ended the practice fairly well is significant but Jamal brings up a good point shouts out my boy at let Maul tell it again Forbes needs to show his a word Saturday though man especially after getting lit up in practice on Thursday it's not a good look and your first look against another team so you need to go out there and ball out Saturday to make sure that these coaches can even trust you out there because yeah you've been looking good in commanders practices so far even though Terry McLaurin has been beat him deep a few times in practice but he's been going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson our best receivers and two receivers that I feel like are really good but then as soon as you go against another team's receivers you're not looking as good and that that does not look really good on your part so this upcoming Saturday game to Jamal's point this preseason game you better bounce back you ended this you in, it sounds like you ended the practice on a fairly high note even though overall again still a bad grade but at least you ended it fairly well we need you to see you to see you continue that momentum them into the preseason game safety wise i don't have really anything to take from that nobody really talked about or pointed out any of the safeties the only thing i have to say about them is again some of those clips of emmanuel forbes getting cooked what is going on where is the safety help some of those times he's getting cooked he's getting cooked deep and his responsibility usually as a corner is supposed to stay underneath and then the safety is supposed to help over top i don't know exactly what was going on there again not good from emmanuel forbes but where was the safety help now moving on to special teams and i'm just gonna let you know right now special teams wasn't much better than emmanuel forbes was i would argue if anything our kickers were even worse than emmanuel forbes we're gonna get to that soon but dan quinn before practice that it said that he wanted to see kickoffs and a little wet ball won't hurt either and basically they haven't mu done much of that yet so they haven't had much practice kicking in the rain and so that he was excited about that going into the practice and i know yes it was raining but both of our kickers looked bad today jb finley was talking live with b mitch during the practice and jb finley was there at practice over their radio show and i mean he was just talking about like man he missed another one. Oh, they missed another one they do not look good they were missing a lot of kicks today we need help we need help bad john com tweeted at 11 13 a.m that remiz ahmed missed the last three field goal attempts that he attempted all from beyond 40 yards but riley patterson also missed his last two both from beyond 45 yards it's just not sounding too good and then and then basically they updated it showing that remiz ahmed was two of five and riley patterson was three of five of kicks today and ref the district pointed out the fact that ref the basically our regular season kicker for the commanders can't currently be on this roster right now there's just no way there's i completely agree there's no way either of these two guys will be our kicker going into the season i don't know where we're gonna find one but we we, we better do something we better make one in the lab but whatever we got going on right now is not working 
And Linnell even pointed out the fact that the Washington's kick returners had a difficulty catching the ball today. Again, Dan Quinn's point. Special teams has not a lot of experience dealing with the rain. So kicking and returning wise, you know, he wanted to see what they could do. They struggled kind of as expected. And we'll see how they adjust to that. Also, before we move on from special teams and pretty much wrap up this video, Austin Eckler did return kicks for Washington at a certain point in practice today. That was pretty notable. That's interesting. I've heard a couple of days of him doing that, but we'll see if we if he if that's like a actual consistent serious thing that he's competing for that spot. And then let's talk about some reviews from some people that were there at practice, just some of their overall what they took away from the practice today type of thing. And as you can see, you have Josh Harris over there at the practice walking off the field at the end of practice i didn't even necessarily know he was there until after practice was over against the jets but either way after the first half of the commanders versus jets 11 on 11 drills nikki javala said commanders looking dot 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 not good struggling in all three phases offense out of sync defense decent up front but got burned a couple of times on the back end forbes beat at least a couple of times and both kickers were missing field goals then my boy mike hall over there at the burgundy podcast make sure you follow him and check out their youtube channel shouts out to them he says so biggest takeaways from the joint practices so far from what i've seen and read are the same problems that we thought we would have going into the season we're going to need some offensive line help slash depth and we need cornerback help asap i mean it's hard to argue against that right now mason kinahan make sure you follow him on twitter as well he said early takeaways from the commanders jets joint practice forbes has work to do pass rush was in impressive when not up against Smith, Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses, the starting tackle. So what can we really even take away from that? And then it's not all sunshine and rainbows with Jaden Daniels, of course, so far. And we need the offensive line to be healthy, please, big time. And then Linnell said that's all for today's session. Mixed bag practice overall. Defense had some nice rushes. Offense was dreadful. Offensive line depth is a major problem. Caveat is no Cosme Co Coleman or Wiley um and so actually I believe Cosme was not able to go as much as I thought I thought he was out there practicing but apparently he wasn't able to practice as much as people assumed he would I heard he was out there at a certain point but maybe not the entire time so but the offensive line was still bad without those guys and then he also finished it up by saying not very good in pass protection and didn't get pushed in the run game at all and then Ben Standig said practice is over gonna say that's a good thing <laughs> rough day in all three phases rain didn't help but also not an excuse like i've been saying and then also shouts out to my boy at burgundy blog good news one rainy out of town practice in early august has low predictive value for the season bad news though this could actually just be who we are right now and that's a good point on both ends and so really for me this was like the get knocked back down to earth type of practice. The type of practice where, I mean, we're not as good as we thought we were type of thing. Now, granted, the Jets are probably Super Bowl contenders when Aaron Rodgers is healthy, but still, we definitely got brought back down to earth. Crash landed even with the way that we went out there and practiced today. And then lastly, before we get up out of here, a couple of random updates. First of all, the Eagles claimed my boy tight end Armani Rodgers, and they just, I don't know what the Eagles are trying to do here, but what all of the Georgia Bulldogs that they draft and trade for and, and uh, with DeAndre Swift there last year and now they're bringing one of my three favorite players that I was most intrigued by the commanders but we cut them now they're bringing them in I mean the Eagles are trying to do everything that they can to get me to root for them I will not I don't care how many Georgia Bulldogs they draft. I will never root for those guys. But boy, they are making it tough. And now they got my freak athlete, Armani Rogers, over there. I would not be surprised if he turns out to be a great player. Because I was screaming about Jordan Mailata coming from rugby, coming from a completely different country and continent, that this is a guy that could potentially be a really good tackle. And next thing you know, he's a Pro Bowl franchise tackle for them. And I feel the same exact way about Armani Rogers at tight end. So watch out, man. The Eagles may have stolen them one, but we'll see. And then also, shouts out to Scott Abraham for retweeting this. He said that we're just waiting for those new Commander Stadium plans because Front Office Sports just announced that NFL teams with $1 billion stadium, stadium plans now include the Bills, $1.5 billion. That was approved. Titans, $2.1 billion. That was approved. The Bears, $4.7 billion. Approved. That was proposed, not approved yet. The Jaguars, $1.4 billion. Approved. And the Browns, $2.4 
four billion dollars proposed as well so you have all of these other teams already moving forward with their processes of getting their new stadiums where are we at commanders where are we at but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in the video please stiff arm that like button stiff arm the subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and a pna video just like this one let me know how you feel about everything that went down in practice today is it time to hit the panic button or should we just wait and not overreact over just one joint practice against a really good team and in the rain are there no room for excuses like i'm saying how do you feel about the situation let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the points that i brought up of course do not leave this video without leaving a like and be on the lookout for more content on the way because i am working on a video that i may come out with tomorrow as i start to review more and more notes and look at a lot of different articles i'm planning on doing like a stock up and a stock down for the joint practice because i don't believe they practice tomorrow as in friday august 9th and then we have the preseason game against the jets on saturday so that little in between day tomorrow of nothingness i feel like that's a good time to really just sit back and do a stock up and stock down on some things that like okay that was better than what we thought going into that jet um, that jets joint practice and some things are worse than what we thought emmanuel forbes we're gonna get there just stay tuned i'll put I'll, i'm gonna work on that video and have that out by tomorrow really appreciate y'all make sure again you do not leave this video without leaving a like i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.